oh, you know what? This is great. We are in um, a regular meeting instead of um, the kind that we usually do. So hopefully we're able to see everybody's holiday sweaters that they're wearing today. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So I have to acknowledge that normally you would see Marnie greeting you, but I'm really honored to be here today with you for the final seller check-in for 2020. You know, it's been a really big year and we would not be out here without all of you guys. So thank you so much. So uh, since we're not in a webinar style Zoom today, we're actually in just kind of a regular Zoom. Um, please submit any questions that you have during the event right there in the chat. And of course, reminder that in the chat, you can choose to message just one person or you can message everybody. So we have a big, wonderful agenda coming up today. Lots of information for you. The first thing we'll talk about is Jordan is going to cover the North America marketplace updates and give some insights into what's coming up next. And then for something that we know is top of mind, Stuart and Ashish are going to give a holiday shipping update. And then next we will hear from Michael Robinson talking about wholesaling here on eBay. And then um, Harry is going to give us a great demo of some um, cool stuff that's coming up from seller experience. Next up, we will hear from Sharon, who's going to give you guys an overview of the Small Business Ambassador Network. And we'll celebrate this year's Advocate of the Year. I saw her join, but no spoilers. <laughs> and then finally, I'll be chatting with Forrester Research VP and Principal Analyst, Sucharita Kodali. And we are going to talk about the current retail landscape and predictions for 2021. Plus, I'm going to be asking her some of the questions that you all submitted as part of the event registration. And so with that, I think, Jordan, it's over to you. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, so first of all, it's uh, awesome to be here. It's the last seller check-in before the year. Uh, I was excited when I heard that it was holiday theme. Uh, I guess you guys can't quite see on the angle, but uh, I've got like, I normally wear eBay t-shirts uh, every day of the year, but I do have a collection of uh, holiday specific t-shirts. Uh, I guess one of my to-dos is to figure out how to get like eBay branded holiday t-shirts. Uh, but for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm pretty much an introvert. Like I don't like New Year's, whatever. Halloween's fun. I can dress up. Uh, I really, really love Christmas and holiday season. So I actually thought I would share, uh, you know, oh no, did I lose my virtual background? So here we go. Uh, so this is usually what um, my house tends to look like. So I do like the lit archways. Uh, We've got like the Christmas inflatables um, and uh, uh, I, uh, I take a lot of pride in sort of, you know, really doing it up and, uh, and having a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know about each of you. I certainly found like this year it's been a little bit harder to get into the holiday ramp when you're not sort of out and about and seeing retail and Main Street lit up. Uh, so it's awesome that, you know, I see a, a bunch of different, you know, swag and, and backgrounds on today's call. Um, but uh, it uh, certainly from a business perspective, uh, not only have we not seen any slowdown or difference versus normal holiday, we've actually seen incredible results. So if we want to jump forward to the next slide. Some of you may have seen uh, through my different uh, posts on public forums, Facebook, uh, eBay community, et cetera, uh, we had an incredible Cyber Five. So we actually had eBay's biggest Cyber Five uh, ever. Uh, and what was so exciting is we actually did it on our terms. So, you know, in the past, you may have seen eBay, you know, put, you know, 40 inch TVs on the homepage or a bunch of other things where candidly, you could probably go and get the same product from Walmart or the same product from Amazon at the same price. Uh, and it's not that those aren't great products, but they're not really eBay. That's not what makes us different and unique. And so, um, you know, different and unique doesn't mean we're only going to feature, uh, you know, collectibles and antiques, but we can really highlight the nature of the inventory that makes eBay such an awesome platform for all of you to run your businesses. And so it was fantastic to see us post these record CyberFi results featuring inventory that isn't going to thrive on Amazon and Walmart. So Certify Refurbish is one of our big um, lean-ins this year. Uh, beyond it being uh, a great way to showcase brands and bring buyers to our site, um, it aligns actually with the next generation of shoppers we want to bring onto the platform. So Gen Z shoppers uh, who uh, actually, you know, not only are they happy to save 20, 30, 40, even 50% off of buying new, but the um, the green benefits of actually you know getting reused tech that isn't you know going into landfill and uh, and it, the more demand we drive for that 
the more buyers are bringing on their platform, the more it actually sends a signal to brands that this inventory is in demand and just creates a positive loop. And uh, it's great to see that thriving on our platform. Uh, of course, game systems have been absolutely on fire. Uh, you know, a lot of stories around like the hot in demand Xbox um, uh, uh, Series X and then the uh, PS5. But not only are people flipping those game systems on eBay, of course, when they get a new game system, they show up, they sell the used one, they sell the old games. And um, and that's been a trend that's been hot really since COVID started. How do you keep your kids entertained at home? Um, but if you have any old game systems of any generation, I think I've probably got an old first gen Nintendo sitting in the garage somewhere. Uh, now is definitely the time to put them up on the platform. So much demand. Uh, and um, and again, you know, in a time when, you know, a lot of families in America are in a different financial situation, getting that used inventory up, filling eBay's full spectrum of value is an incredible uh, way to um, uh, to actually help out uh, other families as well. Um, watches have been doing really well. Uh, you know, we've seen, um, you know, incredible demand across luxury in general, watches, sneakers. Um, you know, sneakers is funny because most people are on Zoom and you can't say anything below the waistline anyways, which is why shirt sales are up and pants sales are way down. But collectible luxury um, have uh, have done all your uh, have done really well all year long, and then you can see some of the callouts um, of uh, hot products uh, in refurb. Uh, Roombas have been selling like crazy. The more people are home, the more they need to keep things uh, clean and tidy. Yesterday, I bought a pair of uh, Sennheiser um, uh, wireless uh, uh, AirPods uh, or earbuds, I guess as they would call them, uh, AirPods, the Apple's brand. But just lots of great product. If you're looking for Dewalt, Makita tools, incredible value. So. It's been fun just to sort of see how holidays come to life on our terms and featuring um, that kind of inventory. And for those of you who may have seen me on CNBC, it was talking about, you know, trying to talk up our like vintage Christmas ornaments and in my extensive Muppet collection. But you will continue to see more from us on how do we talk about what makes eBay unique and different um, versus just trying to play everybody else's standard uh, retail playbook. If we jump forward one more slide. So where are we going? Uh, so a couple of things. So, you know, our big focus this year, you've heard me talk about watches, sneakers, um, certify refurbished. Obviously we're gonna start to, um, you know, bring some consistency and predictability into seller refurbished next year. Um, but you're also gonna hear a lot more from us around collectibles. Uh, and when, and number one on that list is actually gonna be uh, the card space. So whether it's sports cards, Pokemon, uh, Pokemon up thousands of percent year over year. Uh, the demand growth in that space is incredible. It's almost akin to what we would have seen from, you know, Beanie Babies and eBay's early days. I don't think I've seen a, a trend explode this quickly. Um, but what you're going to see is not just these items being featured in our marketing. How do we actually fix the end end experience so it's better for buyers and for you as sellers? And one of the first changes we actually announced yesterday, which is in partnership with USPS, um, we've actually created a new shipping service called eBay Standard Envelope. Uh, and um, it, it's pretty cool because for less than a dollar, what we're actually able to give you uh, is uh, tracking. So you get all the benefits of that kind of protection. Uh, we're starting in cards, but it's actually a service that's extendable to really potentially any item under $20. So you could think of it going into, I don't know, Joe, if you're on the call, but you'd ask me this morning, you know, could it go into stamps or into postcards? Like it's an incredible service in terms of the tracking, the savings, uh, and um, and really helping you make those uh, top rated seller qualifications at lower price point products. Uh, and so in a year where obviously, um, you know, USPS has struggled on a number of dimensions. And I think, uh, you know, um, we've had some challenges with on time shipping uh, more broadly. It's been awesome to have their partnership on bringing this new service onto eBay and helping um, have a track service for uh, more sellers at, uh, at different products and different um, different price points. Uh, and of course, the and, uh, last thing I want to say on this one is uh, beyond the product, beyond the shipping, beyond the new services, you will also start to see us roll out, you know, more policy changes. So for those of you who've been following our, our changes in watches and sneakers, we've been starting to test our way into the notion of final sale and how we can actually legitimately stand behind you as sellers uh, to not accept returns uh, and not accept returns uh, in a way where you then don't have to deal with an escalation uh, uh, and then get forced into the return. So that's a very tricky one, but want you to know that as we touch each of these categories, we're leveraging buyer experience, seller experience, Harry's team, shipping, the trust work, so that we can actually drive up not just the experience for buyers, but drive up the experience for you as sellers on the platform as well. And if we jump forward one more slide, the last thing I want to touch on, 
it was actually just a really exciting initiative uh, that um, uh, that you know full credit to you know many of the folks from the seller organization on the call today. Uh, this wasn't something that was in our plan in January. This wasn't something we sort of said as a corporate priority. Um, it was actually from sort of the energy and inertia of just, you know, your advocates inside eBay who are just passionate about how do we invest in our seller community um, to start this up and running grant program. It's, you know, really cool. $500,000 of investment, um, you know, going to 50 small businesses to help people get started and scale their business. Uh, I'm really excited to see where this goes because it's so on track for our core mission, extension of retail revival, up and running, you know, how do we get, you know, Main Street selling on America? Um, and in a world where there are lots of places for people to start their businesses, you could, you know, start a business direct on Facebook, you could go to Shopify, they've got great tools. Uh, I think eBay is still uniquely positioned with 180 million buyers globally to empower the true SMBs just to get going and have access to instant demand. Um, and it's so core to our heritage to, you know, invest and grow and scale with each of you and so many other sellers. So um, I'm really excited to see this initiative. Uh, you know, please get the word out, apply by December 11th. Uh, and I think uh, this one should be really fun for us to not just make the announcement around um, who wins, but actually track and see how we can, you know, uh, tell the story of those sellers and, and bring even more people uh, to our platform. And so uh, with that, I think we're actually gonna hand it over to uh, Stuart and Ashish. So I know we talked about um, eBay standard envelope, but with everything going on right now, shipping is a very hot topic. And so I wanted to make sure you could hear the latest from Stuart on what's really going on with the carriers. Uh, and then some of you may know Ashish, he leads stores and pricing, but is also the lead for my organization uh, to partner with trust around uh, seller protections and policies. So I wanted to give Stuart and Ashish a chance just to let both let all of you know what's going on in the shipping landscape to help address your questions and get the word out around what uh, what you as sellers need to worry about and what uh, what you're in good shape on. So, Stuart Ashish, over to both of you. Hey, thanks, Jordan. Um, first, guys, I just want to say thanks to everyone for everything you're you're doing currently and what you've done all of this year. Uh, yes, uh, there is real congestion in all of the uh, carrier networks, and it is a very challenging environment. Uh, we've talked over the, the course of this year and leading up to this peak about this potentially being the peak of peaks uh, uh, just based on a volume basis and also the possible impact of, of COVID as we got into peak season. And certainly we're seeing some of that come uh, into reality uh, as we talk right now. Uh, what are we seeing specifically? There was uh, absolutely a real spike coming out of Cyber 5 uh, in volume that really hasn't relented. All of the carriers uh, are talking about really record volumes and those volumes staying pretty consistent on a daily basis. Um, what we're seeing specifically uh, with UPS and FedEx, uh, I think a lot of you are aware that they did put in place volume control mechanisms um, with most of their large customers back in September. So they were planning for this. I think probably some of you even had those conversations with uh, with the carriers if you have those direct relationships. And, and so what we're seeing is they're both actively using those tools. Uh, and while their networks uh, are full of volume, they're capping uh, what comes into it. And, and based on that, we're still seeing pretty solid uh, levels of performance out of UPS and FedEx. Um, with USPS, uh, they're seeing the same thing with continued growth in volume on a daily basis. Uh, and again, uh, with re limited relief, I think they're even talking about that uh, publicly. So they're delivering record volumes, but they're also receiving record volumes. Uh, and this is putting them behind um, for sure. We know this is a concern and we're, we're doing everything we can to address it. Uh, I want to remind everybody that still the majority of packages are being delivered on time or even early, uh, but absolutely we know that the delays are growing and we're working on it. Um, our dedicated team on a daily basis works with all three carriers. We're looking at metrics on a daily basis like on time, transit time increases, just what are we seeing in, in the length of how long it's taking stuff to get delivered versus on time how much new volume is coming into the systems, uh, acceptance scan adherence, uh, as we think about all three, but particularly the post office, 
And we are absolutely uh, continuing to adjust delivery estimates shown to buyers. We're doing this actively on a daily basis, and we're going to continue to do so. Um, so the networks are going to continue to be uh, crowded uh, and congested. We're going to continue to work with all three and keep a real eye on things and to do what we've been doing. Uh, so with that, I want to uh, turn it over to Ashish. She's going to talk a little bit about protections. Thanks, Stuart. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll again echo uh, Stuart's sentiments. Thank you so much for everything you're doing through this holiday season. Um, Business Stewards update. So, what are we doing to partner with you guys to um, to help through these challenges? First, uh, I want all of you to know we are protecting you. Um, your seller performance won't be impacted by things that are outside your control, um, as long as you continue to meet the expectations you are setting in your listings. Most importantly, um, as long as you're meeting the handling day handling time promise you set there, even if the items are getting delivered late, that won't count against you in seller performance um, standards. Second, uh, within that, within seller protection, um, any escalated INRs, we won't be adjudicate, adjudicating those against uh, sellers for 10 extra days to allow for extra time for those items to get delivered um, because we know items are, in some cases, getting delivered late. Um, second, we are proactively uh, messaging our buyers. We are setting expectations with them, as Stuart said, while most packages are getting delivered on time, um, we are seeing increasing delays and in some cases, and to be patient and to watch for um, the uh, delivery estimates that they are seeing on their carriers and continue to be patient and support our small businesses. Uh, messaging to this effect is uh, going live on our site uh, today um, to, uh, to, to make sure buyers are aware of this uh, and it'll be prominently displayed both on the homepage and with a dedicated landing page um, on eBay. Yeah, on, on eBay. Um, and lastly, um, Stuart talked about this. Um, we just know that um, Stuart and his team are continuing to be in really close touch with carriers. We're making adjustments on the site um, as we keep getting more data. We have extended delivery, da uh, delivery dates um, in, uh, in a lot, lot of pockets. We are continuing to watch acceptance scans. We're continuing to watch carrier performance. We'll make more updates um, as the situation continues to evolve. Uh, and Suet and team are continuing to advocate on your behalf with the carriers. Um, so those are the three big things I want to make sure that uh, that folks are aware of. With that, I'll I'll hand over to uh, hand over to Michael Robinson. All right, thank you, Ashish. Uh, appreciate it. Um, and you know, I think everybody's going to say thank you to all the sellers out there today. But it is it um, it, it's genuine. It uh, th this group. Uh, sellers on eBay mean a great deal to to our business. Uh, I've been here for over uh, 20 years working with sellers directly and couldn't be more excited about the direction that we're continuing to go as a company, which is uh, one of the things that I get to talk to you guys about today that I'm excited about is we entered into a, um, a new partnership with a company that's able to uh, bring wholesale inventory to the platform. Um, but what's what's more exciting um, than the partnership, honestly, is the work that Harry's team on the seller experience side has done to build capabilities to easily generate draft listings. And I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of that through um, the next the next couple of slides. But what I'd like to first call out is uh, on the next slide, is a little bit about the the partner that we're working with uh, directly. So Bulk uh, is is the partner that we uh, have selected for this opportunity to really introduce wholesale inventory directly to uh, to our buyer sellers uh, as a, as a way to source uh, uh, new inventory to uh, get get out there and in, into the marketplace. Um, Bulk has direct relationships with retailers. Um, manufacturers and brands where they're taking uh, taking back into uh, their their warehouse uh, returns uh, and other reverse logistics type of uh, goods. Um, they're able to box it in uh, in in some inventory boxes, post it up on on eBay, and and provide you access to go and and purchase. Um, and if if we move on to the next slide. 
the the exciting thing that's going on is um, honestly over the last uh, probably ten months from inception to uh, product out the door, uh, there's a really cool capability that's been built where uh, through information that we're receiving from bulk about the items that are in an individual box, there's what we're calling a manifest uh, that's generated. And it's a, uh, it's a simple alphanumeric number that once you purchase this box, um, you're able to see that in your, in your seller hub view and automatically generate uh, draft listings for the box that you purchased. Uh, I did one literally 10 minutes before this meeting so that it's set up in my, in my account. And I'm gonna walk you through what that, what that looks like. So uh, Jason, I'm gonna take over uh, and do a screen share so I can walk through that right now. All right, so in, in your Seller Hub view, if you've purchased a bulk box, you can see this language um, right here that says generate drafts for bulk inventory. And on this link right here, when you, it says generate drafts, it then opens up this window and you can see it automatically recognizes that I bought this lot ID and that there are 15 items within this and I can generate drafts right there. I'll show you the second way before I actually click the button and show you how easy it is. So when you go up to create listings, which is um, one of the normal uh, places that you would go, there's a new link here that says listings from bulk inventory. You click on that, and again, it brings you to the same place where it recognizes that I have this lot ID. When I click on generate draft listings, it's now looking at the information behind, and it tells me right now 15 drafts have been processed for the selected inventory. So now I'm done. Now it's populated all of the items that were, that were in that box. So I can go through at any point in time and start to um, identify, change, uh, um, upload a price, um, un understand that there's some additional attributes that I'll want to put in there to make a, uh, you know, a great listing. Uh, but there is a short description and other attributes that are being passed on so that it takes a lot of the work away from what you will end up having to do. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And if you can go back to the slide, Jason. Thank you. Um, at, at the end of the day, it's really uh, the capability that's been built is something that we've never done before. Uh, and partnering with Bulk, we're able to get the information um, in, in the boxes, put it to you in a way that you can generate these, these draft listings and start to put inventory up um, and even ahead of time of receiving that box. So that box I bought 10 minutes ago, instantaneously that information is in my seller hub and I can start to do some of the added research that I'll wanna do for pricing and getting those, those listings prepared. So when I receive the box in my house here, uh, then I can start to uh, post them and, and sell them immediately. Um, and if you want to learn more about this, you can you can go to ebay.com slash source inventory. And there's a lot of great information about the uh, about the overall uh, overall program. But again, so, so excited about the capability that's that's been built. And uh, we're going to continue to uh, improve on the user experience, looking for customers' feedback as they enter into this um, uh, purchasing boxes and, and giving us in, um, inventory insights on how we can do better. And with that, I will hand it over to Harry. Awesome. The bulk stuff is so cool, isn't it, everybody? I mean, it's super easy to go from bulk purchase to bulk listing, which I just put in the chat. Um, first, uh, happy holidays to everybody. Uh, I wish I had a Christmas t-shirt like Jordan. I just have the regular eBay t-shirt today and it's too cold in the East uh, to actually just wear the t-shirt because I'm gonna tilt this way past the Christmas tree. And if you can see, it is snowing out there and snow on the ground. So it is a really cool day uh, here in the East to have a little bit of snow ahead of the holidays. Um, I have about 10 minutes and I've got a lot of cool stuff to show you guys. Uh, the first thing, which is not going to be a demo, uh, because we've talked about it in a lot of the other seller check-ins, 
and in the upfronts is I'm really excited to announce that we are launching shipping label support for MUA. That's right, that'll go out on Monday. It was a, took a little bit longer than I had hoped, but it is at least out a couple of weeks before Christmas. And again, that means you can now grant access to others and employees to do full shipping label support, not just shipping tracking. Remember we had launched shipping tracking a little while ago. So that rounds out all of the ability to really do full order fulfillment with multi-user account access. All right, so I'm also gonna take over the screen now um, so let's share uh, the desktop. And what I want to do is I want to start, let me just make sure it's all minimized, uh, with traffic and the new listing quality report. Some of you might have seen this in some of the upfronts, uh, but I want to, it's such an important new feature uh, that I felt it was really important to bring it to the seller check-in. Even if you've seen it before, you might have not caught all of the cool features in it. So it'll give you an opportunity to see that. And for those of you that haven't seen it, an amazing tool uh, that is really gonna help you understand how to improve your listings. So first off, two quick things. At the top of the traffic report, you're gonna see two new banners. One is the ability to download your traffic. And then the other is to actually download the listings quality report itself. Now, the cool thing about being able to access the traffic data, right, in Excel now is you can actually rank all the data. It's something that we're gonna to bring to the traffics page. It's not there today, but at least you can get it through Excel. And quite frankly, you get a lot more flexibility when you do bring it into Excel. And here, these are my actual listings. You see a couple of my son's sneakers at the top here. And it does allow me to really interrogate how it's doing relative to the organic impressions versus the promoted impressions. Now, normally I'd go into a lot more detail on what the numbers mean here, particularly with the Nike Air Max strawberries where promoted and organic are about the same in terms of the ad rate that I'm using versus the Air Jordans, which has a lot more competitive market. And you can see how many more promoted impressions I'm getting versus organic. But the key here is that I use this to get an indication of my listing quality and the ad rates that I want to use. And so when I want to learn more about my listing quality, that's when I go over to the listing quality report. Now, the listing quality report has got a tremendous amount of information in it. First off, it's going to analyze all of the listings in all of the categories by condition that you list in. So at the bottom, and I've chosen uh, a seller out of the UK, Minute Anonymous, but you can see at the bottom here, I mean, they sell in a tremendous amount of categories, bed frames, wristwatches, uh, sofas, and so forth, and for new, um, and, then, uh, and then use condition, right? So those are your different conditions. And what it's really going to do is break down all of your listings relative to the top 10 and bottom 10 performing listings in the category as your benchmarks. So first in the summary page, it's actually going to call out at a high level top recommendations or what we think are the improvements that you can make in each of the categories, okay? Now, if we dive in a little deeper and let's say that we go into bed frames and bases for a second, again, you will see where you rank relative to the top 10% eBay items in the category in terms of searches for your listings, the click-through rates, the sales conversion rates. And then again, across impressions, viewed items and sold items, it's gonna again do those benchmarks and look at every element of the listing. You know, we talk a lot about item specifics and yes, they're a very, very important component to the listing, but this report goes well beyond just telling you about your item specifics. It actually, again, looks at all the elements. Are you using free shipping? How long is the, the you know, free shipping? Click and collect, are you using promoted listings, the number of photos, number of keywords in the title, what is your handling time, then are you using any of the SME functionality, that seller marketing engine, are you using international shipping or the global shipping program, and based on all of those elements of the listing, benchmarking that against, again, the top 10 and bottom 10, it's going to call out the top two recommendations or improvements that you can make to your listings. Now, in this particular case, it's saying Google Shopping Applied is in the red and brand is in the red. So you're missing brand and you're also missing elements in the listing that is not enabling it to be sent up to Google Shopping. And I'll talk about that in a second. Let's just take a look at some of the other categories real quick. Video games, again, Google Shopping Applied. 
Betting Sets is saying you're missing, again, brand and EAN. If we go to DVDs and Blu-rays, EAN, right? Mobile phones is actually, you are missing recommended item specifics. And it's also saying that you should use promoted listings. So again, it's going to give you different recommendations based on the demand and the supply we're seeing in the categories on what you can do to either improve the quality of the listing or use different conversion tools. Now, it's also going to produce a report that shows you when the listings were rejected from Google Shopping and why they were rejected. Remember, we send all the listings up to Google Shopping, but they have to be compliant. Remember, certain things like you've got to have brand, it's really important, or a G10. You can't have any background in your photos or watermarks and things. This report will give you all of that insight to tell you which actions you can take. And of course, you can see all the links go directly here back to Seller Hub. All right, so that's a super quick high level view. You actually should all have access to this report now. We've opened it up to 30,000 sellers. And I think we've made sure that all of you were originally on the list from upfronts and the like. So I think all of you should have access to the report here in the US. Okay, so now let's go back to um, uh, active listings. How do you take advantage of a lot of that traffic you're seeing or the improvement uh, to the listings? One of the great conversion drivers has been seller initiated offers. One of the newest features that we added to SIO is the new auto send feature. So first I, uh, I filtered my listings using the send offers filter pill to eligible here. And I'm just gonna click on Jurassic Park here. I do sell a lot of videotapes. And you will see a new feature here, a new checkbox that says automatically send offers. When you turn this on, what will happen is whenever you have a new watcher or someone is heavy browsed, right? After the holding period, right? We'll wait 48 hours just you know, to give time between when people come in and the ability to send offers. It will now automatically send uh, the default offer that you've set up, okay? So it really automates the entire process four listings in which whenever a new watcher comes in, you want the system to automatically send them that personalized discount, you can do that. Now, we've gotten a lot of feedback, very positive feedback. One of the big elements is, can you make it work in bulk? And that's something that'll be coming. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of additional work to make it work in bulk from active listings. So at the moment, it is on, a, on an individual listing only, and that's something that is on the roadmap for the future, okay? All right, now, Next thing that I wanna show you is something brand new that again, all of you on this call are going to be on the inclusion list to get when we launch it next week, which is the new sourcing insights capability of TerraPeak. So this is gonna be a brand new page. You'll see it here under the research tab, TerraPeak sourcing. And what it defaults to is all the things that I sell in, it'll give me a look at those categories, but of course you can search and browse by any category that you want and it's gonna call out the categories that are gonna provide the best opportunity to source in by looking at the active search volume relative to the search to relative to active listings. So that's the search to listing ratio and how this is done to the master, you know, basically the L1 category of, in this case, athletic shoes under men's shoes. So it's calling out a great opportunity. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dive into this it's going to give me click-through rates and the like. Again, just for the sake of time, I'm going to show you the top combinations. So looking at the item specifics, the impressions data, again, with the sell-through rate and the click-through rates, and then looking at the number of listings that have these particular item specifics, we're going to call out the best combinations to source. And then if you click here, it dives directly into TerraPeak right, with that search, and then you can use all the additional item-specific filters to really narrow it down even more, all right? So an amazing, awesome new tool that we're just getting ready to go, um, and again, to help you with sourcing, what's trending, what's hot on the platform, what's it selling for, uh, with easy links to get at all this data, all right? And I think I have one minute left, so the last thing that I just want to remind everybody is next year we're gonna start ramping our next generation listing tool, which really combines all of our legacy listing tools and is gonna give you one consistent experience for listing across mobile, tablets, and desktop. We actually call it Helix internally. And one of the highlights is, you know, a lot of feedback came in about image cleanup on, on mobile. And here again, one of the great features is we have added it to desktop. So I'm gonna click on a ready to go photo. You're gonna see remove background here. I'm gonna click on that, hit continue. 
and instantly it's removed all the background and I'm gonna save that photo. And now that's in the carousel in the desktop listing tool. And you're gonna see a lot of other significant enhancements with Helix as we go into next year and begin the migration to this next generation tool. But one of the greatest features, aside from the image cleanup, is the fact that you will have this consistent experience, look and feel and functionality across mobile, tablet, and desktop. And so with that, I will give it back. Who am I turning over? Sharon, I think? Yeah, it's Sharon who's up next. All right. Thanks, Harry. Thank you. Great. Well, wow. Um, very exciting uh, time to be at eBay. I'm really excited to be able to join you all today. Um, I'm Sharon McBride, and I'm on the government relations team, and I am headquartered in the Washington, D.C. office. And uh, really, uh, GR has two um, things that you all can become a part of. One is if you're just interested in getting more information about e-commerce issues, um, public policy issues that affect our small businesses, we have a website. It's ebaymainstreet.com. You can see it here over my head. Um, and that way you'll get on our newsletter list and we try not to spam you. But also if there's a public policy issue in your state or in your congressional district, you might get an email from us to ask you to write a letter to your member um, and help us um, influence legislation in your favor. The other one I think would be most interesting to this group is our Small Business Ambassador Network. And if we can move on to the next slide. So our Small Business Ambassador Network is a uniquely eBay program. Our sellers really are our differentiator in the government relations and public policy world. Um, these are eBay enthusiasts who are interested in government relations or politics. Uh, we actually need one seller in at least every congressional district. There are 435 congressional districts in the US. Um, and so we are always looking for new members. Um, it is an application process um, and an interview is required. Um, and you can see the link and I'll put it in the chat later, um, ebaymainstreet.com slash span. And so if you want to become a small business ambassador, what, what might you be asked to do? Um, we would ask you to meet with a legislator or a regulator, either the state local or the federal level. We might ask you in cooperation with our corporate communications department to uh, pen an op-ed or a letter to um, the editor in one of your local newspapers or publications. Um, we've also had sellers testify before um, government bodies. Um, you might be asked to testify in front of Congress or at a state capitol. And the other program we have um, which is very popular, um, is our advocacy days. So we actually fly in 20 to 25 sellers to Washington, D.C. every year. It usually happens in May. We, of course, weren't able to do that this year. We will be having a virtual fly-in um, in May. We try to do it around Small Business Week. Um, so you might be invited to, to do that. And we do try to make it um, a program. We are asking you for your time and um, your help with our public policy issues and to represent the eBay community in front of members. So we do have a number of benefits that are exclusive to SPAN <clears throat> members and you can, you can see those there. One of the things we always do at our advocacy day <clears throat> um, held in Washington annually is we do have a Small Business um, Advocate of the Year Award. So this year, of course, we weren't able to have our fly-in, but we still wanted to give out our award. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, about that. We had, of course, many worthy candidates, but one Small Business Ambassador stood above the rest. Uh, it was my honor to announce this earlier at a Small Business Ambassador Network event in November. And our Advocacy Leadership Award goes to Teresa Cox. Hello, Teresa. A longtime eBay seller, Teresa opened her eBay store in 1997 as a way to start fresh after a three-decade career in finance operations. 
Teresa is constantly willing to share her small business story to influence legislation. She participated in our 2018 Advocacy Day and has taught two webinars this year with the Arizona Department of Commerce. Um, addition, additionally, she signed um, onto our Supreme Court amicus brief during our fight against internet sales tax and has penned a couple of op-eds in Arizona newspapers commenting on various issues ranging from IST to postal reform. It's an honor always to work with Teresa and Teresa, thank you so much for all of your help. Great. Congratulations, Teresa. We're thrilled for you. And if you're watching the chat, you can see that everybody's cheering. Reminder to everyone, you can also use the reactions on the screen to, you know, put up a little trumpet or clapping hands. Um, so if you want to say a quick word, Teresa, you're more than welcome to. Um, otherwise, I think, Sharon, if that's it, I think it's on to me and Sucharita next. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And um, I'll put the application link in the chat for those of you who might be interested in joining us. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Sharon. Wow, we've had a lot of great content today. Um, and up next, we're going to have a fireside chat with Sucharita Kodali, who is here from Forrester to tell all of us some insights and information about um, holiday and what's coming up next. So Sucharita, hello. How are you this morning? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Rebecca. It's great to be here. And we're really thrilled to have you, and we're excited that we can um, bring you and your insights and the information that you have to the sellers to help them um, anticipate what's up next, understand how this holiday season is going, and um, be ready for next year. So, um, you know, I have to admit that I definitely shopped early this year, um, pretty much bought everything online. I don't know, how's, how's your shopping been this year, personally? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's funny that you say that because you may be an exception. Um, I think that a lot of retailers and merchants and and probably a lot of the sellers on the call may have hoped that um, October would have been stronger. And in spite, I think, of a lot of the best efforts of the industry um, and a lot of promotions that companies were really trying to push, um, unfortunately, um, many shoppers were were still holding off, and and they continued uh, to hold off. Off. And in spite of even all of the shipping delays that we talked about earlier on this call, all of the media reports about the challenges with shipping, I think that consumers are are still a little um, behind um, relative to where we um, would expect them to be at this point in uh, in the holiday shopping cycle. Interesting. Well, okay. So we know that e-commerce was like essential throughout the yep. pandemic, um, and retailers, small businesses. Uh, they had to quickly adapt. Can you tell us some of the top trends you've seen in the evolution of e-commerce and online re retail experiences this year? Um, and I think we're really interested also in what product lines are shoppers buying online? The, what would normally people have gone to brick and mortar retailers that now they're buying online? Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest things that we've, of course, seen is, is of course, that shift to, to digital. And in particular, I mean, eBay has been really great about being ahead of that curve and enabling a lot of the small local merchants with up and coming and a lot of the, the programs that have really been about supporting those local businesses, because those companies have been the hardest hit and need to pivot the hardest and the fastest. And and some of that, of course, is digital. Some of it is just enabling things like curbside pickup wherever possible, um, digital payments. If you happen to have that physical infrastructure, those are those are important, and that's been a big change and a big shift. Um, and uh, leaning into marketplaces, I mean, com consumers have, um, and, and I think that that that's reflected in some of that Cyber Five data that we saw earlier. Is that the marketplaces have gained disproportionately? I I think part of that has been because the consumer expects choice and they do expect the selection when they can't find it elsewhere. Um, and, and also, I mean, it's sort of, you know, it's, this is, that's what's top of mind. It's been top of mind for, for a while. And it's certainly top of mind um, during the pandemic as well as far as categories are concerned. I think that, um, 
Jordan had touched on um, a lot of the electronics and some of those um, categories about keeping families busy. The other categories that I would say that we're seeing, um, certainly anything that supports warmth at home or, um, you know, kind of is, uh, is about warmth. Um, if you're outside, um, just socializing with people, that can be anything from fleece is doing very well right now. We're seeing, um, you, you know, kind of things like socks and PJs and anything that that is about um, comfort, like blankets, those those seem to be doing well. Anything that's outdoor, do it yourself home. Um, we're still seeing things like, um, you know, heat lamps and fire pits being sold out. Um, and, uh, and we still see huge uptake on anything that's workout related. So exercise related, um, you know, leggings, it could be, um, you know, at home exercise size equipment. So from a subcategory standpoint, those are those are some of the small trends too. Interesting. I know I bought a tabletop patio heater this year myself. So it's really true. <laughs> Good for you. Hopefully you got it ahead of you know the the, the sellouts. <laughs> exactly. Never mind the toilet paper. Bring us heaters. Right. Um so this year <laughs> there has been um a really noticeable change in shopper behavior. So let's talk about some of those behavioral change changes. Um mobile payments and shopping, um, you know, people are at home with their desktops, maybe they're with their phones. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we see, have been seeing, and certainly even through the pandemics, you see a tremendous amount of multi-device usage within households. So what that means is, you know, you, you will have like, you know, the people who are on their Zoom calls, like shopping on the side, you know, but they're not shopping necessarily on the desktop. It's, you know, on an iPad or um, it's on a, on a phone on the side. So, so there is, um, there's definitely a lot of, of that that continues. There's a lot of pre-shop before consumers, if they are going into the physical store, um, a lot of inventory checking or a lot of um, just investigating where they need to, um, you know, kind of create that short list of, of who they're going to, you know, kind of consider in, in the course of that transaction. So, um, so, so that's, that's definitely um, a big, a well, I wouldn't even necessarily, it's, it's a continued shift that's been going for a number of years that um, is, is still, you know, a big part of that experience now. Um, so you just want to be conscious as a seller of things like, you know, making sure that the imagery that you portray is, um, you know, going to be reflected well on different device sizes and, um, you, you know, kind of you have um, that level of, um, of just information that consumers need in the course of the transaction. We are seeing a lot of uh, a video, um, a lot of customer service calls too. So just responding quickly to questions that consumers may have, that's an expectation of customers. Um, it has been, and you know, just the faster you respond, the more quickly you are to um, close, a, a, you know, kind of a sale, particularly if people are um, considering something and they're not, um, you, you know, kind of at, they haven't, they haven't rendered payment yet. Um, and then video too. We, we've seen um, video certainly provide um, greater boosts to conversion whenever we see that offered. Um, so just being able to provide, it's, it's essentially an extension of imagery. So, and, and we know that the more images you, you share, the more likely that um, there is to be um, a sale ultimately. Right. That's a, that's a great reminder. It certainly reflects what we see here at eBay as well. So, you know, continuing to think a little bit about holiday for many people, it's those ho post-holiday sales that they get excited about, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Buyers want to, you know, score a deal and sellers want to, you know, end the, the year strong. What can our sellers here today anticipate about post-holiday sales? Yeah, and um, the bulk announcement, I, you know, and I was uh, seeing it looks like there's a tremendous amount of excitement about that. That could actually be one of the great places to potentially get some of that post holiday excess inventory. I think that the issue is that this holiday season, and part of the reason that other merchants outside of eBay have seen a lot of softness is that they have not even had as much inventory. The pandemic um, essentially forced a lot of companies to cut their orders pretty early and they didn't go back and um 
you know, kind of revisit a lot of those cancellations. And what you had as a result is even through Thanksgiving weekend, you had um, less compelling offers like merchant to merchant than you did in the past. So it was um, completely common in the past that you would on a Cyber Monday have 40% off of everything on a website plus free shipping. And that was far less common this year. It was more likely that you would have 30% off of select items with a shipping threshold. So um, just the richness of those offers was substantially less than in years past. And part of the reason for that is that there just wasn't as much inventory that retailers had to discount. And um, they're trying to make that inventory that they have last as long as possible. So what that potentially means is that um, there's not going to be as much in the way of sales post-holiday. And that could be um, to the advantage of sellers because eBay sellers. And the reason for that is that if there's less competition out there, um, you know, that's a good thing for you because you would be able to to jump on the consumers that are expecting sales, but just not finding them um, or offers and they're not finding them. So um, you want to, you know, be able to take advantage of that if possible. I mean, people will buy after Christmas if there are sales. It's entirely promotionally driven. Like that's sort of the big driver of, you know, kind of that between Christmas and, and New Year's rush, whether it's e-commerce or um, in stores. It's, you know, what's on sale? What can I get that didn't, you know, kind of get sold already that 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 I may be able to take advantage of? And, um, you, you know, and if, if there isn't going to be much of that and we don't expect as much this year, um, if you have anything excess, you know, take advantage of that time frame, promote it, um, you know, and really, uh, you know, kind of jump on anything that, that you can get your hands on. Right. Yeah. It's a good time to move some of that, uh, some of that inventory maybe that's been hanging around for a lot of the year and that yeah. you can start fresh for 2021. So with that in mind, let's let's do have that look forward. Um, that's one of the things that we're really excited to have you here is to tell us a little bit about what we can anticipate for 2021. So I, you know, I hear that online shopping and COVID habits are likely to continue post-pandemic, especially those ones that make our lives a little bit easier or better, lets us do things from the couch, which is really comfortable. Um, And so I would love to hear from you. What are your predictions for those behaviors in 2021 and and beyond? Well, the single biggest um, change, I think, is really just the just the amount of internet research that um, has been happening. And certainly the pandemic has accelerated in every product category. Um, so, so just that is, is, you know, will continue. So that, so, and where that makes a difference um, for sellers is that your ability to show up and be present when consumers are in that search process, because if their first touch point is digital, um, you know, and in the past, maybe their first touch point was, Walmart stores, um, it just gives you more of an opportunity to be apparent in the course of that shopping funnel for all kinds of different categories that you may not have um, been considered for in the past. So, so that's definitely um, just something that's a subtle change, but, but it's an important one because it, um, you know, it basically gives small merchants um, so much more opportunity than what they had in the past. Um, We also expect to see more um, distributed commerce. It's been a term that's been around for a long time. Um, But the idea of, you know, kind of completing transactions on social networks or completing transactions um, off a merchant site or enabling things like shoppable video that um, will be ways for um, a merchant to connect directly to their audience. Like these are all things that we expect to continue to see. They um, have a tremendous amount of potential. I think a lot of the playbook in the U.S. is still being shaped and formed. Um, but we've known for for decades that businesses like QVC and HSN are incredibly powerful and incredibly lucrative, and they resonate with so many people. Um, their issues have always been that 
you know, it's a medium which is highly dependent on, um, you know, kind of television adjacencies and how low the channel number was and what they were next to. So people would just happen to stumble upon a page, their their network, and and stop and 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 watch it. And what's different and really powerful about shoppable video is, um, I mean, there's a live component which is, um, you know, kind of takes elements of that of the QVC experience, but there's also the ability to have an on demand experience too. And, um, and that expands the universe of, of who can be exposed to and who can be, um, you know, I guess seduced by, um, you, you know, kind of great selling. So, uh, so there, there, I think that the, that's really some of the, the big change that we expect through 2021, especially if there is less of an opportunity to sell in the physical store, there's not the ability to touch and feel merchandise in a physical environment. If we have more lockdown, Downs, um, you know, in the coming months. Hopefully, we won't because we'll be able to, um, you know, get vaccines. But, um, but you know, if things even get harder in the next few months, something to offset that can be, um, you know, just more video selling. Interesting. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful to know, and and I'm sure that the sellers <laughs> are. I'm sure that their their minds are churning now. So um, a few minutes ago, we talked a little bit about promotions and discounts and marketing and those sorts of things around um, post holiday. But where are we going? What's the future there? Um, and how do sellers and online retailers um, gain shoppers trust? What kind of messages should we be putting out there? Well, um, the the good thing about promotions is that they never lose their um, you, you know, kind of their appeal. Um, you know, it's it's the the it's the demand curve, right? I mean, if you're able to offer something as a as a promotional discount, the consumer will always respond to that in some way, shape, or form. I think that the challenge for sellers is how do you sell without too much, um, giving away too much of your margin. And, and that's um, particularly uh, problematic if you're selling a commoditized good or one where there it's, it's broadly available um, online. That That's always an issue. And, and typically the, the biggest promotions are going to be often in, in the most broadly available goods. Um, the the things that we recommend and and I think that a lot of um, the efforts that that eBay has made as well to supporting sellers outside of promotions are um, a lot of those authenticity guarantees or any type of you know post transaction service levels that sellers are able to provide um, you know whether it's you know support with setup or um, you know, kind of some sort of a guarantee, um, a, a band of time that, you know, the product itself has a guarantee or, um, you know, kind of that there is um, anything to, to layer on value to the customer beyond just discounting that good. And, um, and that is something that we are seeing um, a lot of brands, brand manufacturers in particular, leaning into when they, they don't want to um, engage in a lot of heavy discounting or high-low pricing. They'll, they'll offer some type of servicing um, on the back end, or they have a special 1-800 number for their, their buyers, or um, they may have certain content, you know, depending on the product category, um, that could be relevant to that user. Um, you know, the, even, you know, kind of engaging in, in events or other type of special meetups that they may do with other users just to get people excited about, about a product. And um, the good thing about events these days is that they can all be done virtually and relatively inexpensively. So um, those are those are all things that we've seen um, as ways to engage customers, to drive conversion, but without having to give away you know, as much of your margin as um, we've seen in the past. Great, thank you. So next up, we're gonna to turn to some of the questions that the sellers here today submitted um, and we chose, and we can't wait to hear what you have to say. So the first question that we got from a seller is, is there anything new that customers want in customer service? I, this is a great question. Do they want fancy, 
and faster answers, more personal touch. Do they want notes, cards, thank yous? I know a lot of sellers do that kind of thing and put them in your, their packages when they're shipping. Um, or do they not care? Is it worth taking the time for that extra personal touch? It definitely can be very helpful to have an extra personal touch if you have the time and the resources and it doesn't take away too much from your margin. Absolutely, highly, highly encourage doing anything that is high perceived value with a low marginal cost. Absolutely. Um, but what you just described, Rebecca, were two different types of customer service. One is like the in-package, um, you, you know, sort of pre, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, before they, you know, kind of, or the the, bo the unboxing customer service experience. And the other is the post-transaction, um, if there is an issue with the product or some expectation around the product, um, the, you know, kind of that level of customer service. And you almost have to address them slightly separately. The unboxing experience, I mean, anything you can do to make things look better. I mean, Poshmark will give instructions to its sellers on, you know, the kinds of tissue paper to use and, you know, kind of what, you know, kind of can, you know, they do encourage you straight up to do a handwritten note because, you know, or put a sticker on, um, you know, kind of the interior or the exterior of the box to just make that unboxing experience look as good as like if I were buying something from um, a luxury store or Lululemon or somewhere else. So, so if you can, and if you, have the ability and the interest in doing that, there is usually no downside because it will usually help that, that seller score. Now, if there's an issue after the fact, and what are people expecting from a customer service, like if something goes awry, um, is usually, um, you know, kind of, it's honestly, uh, you know, kind of, if you don't want to give a, you know, kind of completely just give a complete refund, listening to the customer and acknowledging them, you know, in many cases, what we will see is that people just want to be heard and they want to, recognize that you're going to go try to fix it for the future. Um, now, you know, in many cases, these are also people who want their money back too. And, and in those cases, there's really, you know, probably that's the only thing you can do to completely appease them. But short of that, um, you know, kind of it is a bit of an investment in time to make them feel heard. And, um, you know, you can do that via email, but in many cases, um, when there are the complaints, it still is a personal, it's a phone call, which is, is usually what is, um, is expected. Interesting. Yeah, I agree that personal touch, whether you're talking about unboxing or following up with a buyer, it's so important. Okay, so we have one last question that um, one of our sellers here submitted. What is shoppers' number one consideration when they're buying online? Is it price, return policy, speed of shipping? Um, what's that motivating factor? What really, you know, has has mo shoppers motivated to finally actually buy, make that purchase? Well, unfortunately, the number one thing which we hear over and over again is um, the fully loaded price of that item. So this is where if you're selling something that's broadly available and that's generally considered to be a commodity, you do have to be looking at what the comparable offer is elsewhere on the internet. And the offer is the price of the item. It could be the particular SKU that you're selling. What is the shipping cost? And, and, and how do you balance that with the shipping time as well? So um, all of those are, that's, that's perhaps the, you know, that always shows up on, on consumer surveys is number one. Number two is, um, you know, kind of very specifically free shipping and consumers typically do want free shipping over fast shipping if they're given the choice between the two. Um, and the, the nuance here in this, I think in this pandemic age, in this Q4 age where there are so many late shipments is to still be transparent where possible. And I know that the eBay team is working very hard to give that visibility to consumers, but, um, you know, to avoid the, um, the overpromising to or any overpromising, which I know nobody here is doing, but you know, you you want to you know make sure that you haven't set up false expectations for for customers on when they can expect a package to arrive and to manage to that as best as as you can. And if there are going to be delays, that you make it transparent where a package is and how much longer it's going to be. And the closer, the more that you're able to share that upfront, the better. And then the third thing that we see is actually 
actually frictionless returns. Um, so the that's to this day one of the single biggest reasons that people who do not purchase online um, or who hesitate purchasing online, that's the reason they don't is because they don't want to have to deal with the hassle of returns. And some of that could be that maybe a merchant would, there's the fear that a merchant may give them a hard time about it. Some of it could be that, you know, the product information um, was not accurate or there wasn't enough product information online. So that's something that you can constantly be auditing your product descriptions to make sure that all of the information that you're presenting a, you have enough of it, and B, that it's actually accurate, especially if it is like a color or a fabric. Um, those are things that tend to be subject to a lot of, of issues on the recipient side because, you know, maybe a color swatch wasn't as it was portrayed in, you know, on, on, the web, on a particular browser or you didn't completely accurately represent something. So, so those are, those are probably some, some, e some of the easier things to fix if you need to. That's great. And that, that reinforces what you said earlier about having more pictures, more information. It's really vital in your listings, right? Yeah. So uh, these were great. Thank you so much for answering the questions. Let's uh, move along to the next slide over here and um, talk about some of your key takeaways, a little bit of predictions um, for the future. And um, let's just talk through the top advice um, that you have for the sellers here. Yeah, and um, and I'll try to get through these quickly because I know that um, we you guys have a pretty packed agenda here as well. Um, but uh, the first thing from a product and assortment standpoint is just at a high level, you know, people continue to shelter at home right now. They're still continuing to work from home. We expect this work from home phenomenon to continue through probably summer of next year um, at least and possibly even longer than that. Um, a number of companies have already um, announced announced that they're not even planning on bringing people back. So what that means is that those categories, the same categories that you've been seeing strength in through much of 2020, um, those should likely um, experience um, gains through 2021 as well. But the piece that I urge you to really consider is at the first sign that you may start seeing softness or shifts, um, just be hyper alert and hyper aware because you don't want to be leaning too heavily into things like office equipment if you know people are then you know kind of all headed back to to the office later later on home office equipment from a fulfillment standpoint um, and the eBay team has done a great job just sharing with you the amount of communication um, that uh, that they're getting from the carriers that they're communicating to you but um, just be on top of that um, late deliveries are going to be the norm through much of Q4 and probably, even into to some of Q1 and any information that you're able to provide proactively um, particularly with respect to when packages are going to arrive or how long it's going to take, um, the more power to you for, for doing that. And if you can present as much of that early in the transaction process as possible, the better, because then that also sets, ex well, A, that sets the consumer's expectation, but B, it probably also reduces um, a contact to you later on. Um, from a pricing standpoint, I talked about this earlier, but we know that prices the number one reason that people choose to buy where they buy and ultimately even what they buy. So just be conducting audits of um, how your merchandise fares compared to competitors that consumers may be also thinking about on other websites as well. Um, and then from, from a marketing standpoint, um, really just, um, you know, kind of being where the shopper is um, from the standpoint of, of, you know, kind of whether um, there's a lot of browsing of course, that is happening on eBay outside of your product categories, and that's where potentially things like sponsored ads could could be useful. Um, videos on social networks, um, including you know, kind of uh, attracting you, you know people if you have um, a relatively strong or growing social ne network presence, really to be pushing um, information and content through through those channels. We've seen um, you know retailers have their own podcasts on content that. That is, you know, if they're in the beauty space, you know, beauty specific podcast, if they are in the home space, you know, home decor um, content, only because they're relatively easy to do their turnkey and um, 
they can they can be fun to put together, although you know somewhat time consuming. But uh, these are just um, ideas for marketing. Oh, that's great! It's such great food for thought that you've given us over this time, and it's also um, really encouraging to hear you reinforce a lot of the things that we advise our sellers to do. So, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I think I speak on behalf of all of the sellers here to say that these sorts of insights and um, you know predictions for the future really help as they grow and build their business. So, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Rebecca. Great. And now um, I think, yeah, it should be over to Jordan for the Q&A section. Perfect. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Sutrita, as always, it's great to have you here. Thank you for, uh, for taking the time. Uh, so we've got a couple questions that were submitted ahead of time. I've tried my best to stay on top of the Q&A uh, in the chat bubble, which has been a bit of a, a bit of a zoo, but lots of great conversation going on. So appreciate everybody uh, jumping in. So uh, first one um, that was pre-submitted, and I think, uh, Hazel, if you are on, I'm going to toss this one over your direction. There you are. Perfect. Uh, so one of the questions submitted before today's call was um, asking about, hey, you know, when something affects sellers broadly, what are we doing to get the message out there? And then, you know, how do we end up where when people sort of, you know, try to jump in and reach out to your teammates, they end up, you know, on hold for two and a half hours. And how do you think about sort of evolving that? Because I know it's not fun for your team to answer a phone call when someone's been waiting for two and a half hours. And for everybody on this Zoom call and, and everybody in the other communities, like they probably would rather be listing and selling than, than just waiting. So would love to kind of get your thoughts on sort of, you know, what you've seen this year and how we think about, um, you know, that uh, that journey. Absolutely. Look, and I think, it, you know, that situation is not ideal at all and one that we've been working to really iterate and to try and improve and to ensure that we have resource and capable resource available when you need it most. Um, I think the one piece that I would say is at the moment, most of you are potentially going to help and contact to find eBay customer support and to find um, an, a, you know, an ability to contact us and coming through, have us call you. So the good news is at least you're not waiting on hold or you shouldn't be waiting on hold. You just submit a request and we actually hold your place in the queue and we ensure to get back to you in that place in the queue. So essentially that is um, thankfully when we, we have very busy times, at least you can go ahead with your, with your listing um, and go ahead with your business and we actually hold your place in the queue. We make sure we get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. But what you will notice, if we're having an issue, where you go into that help and contact, there we will add a banner to that page to tell you that there are delays or that there's an issue we're investigating or you know there, there, there may be no need to contact us, that we will get to you, et cetera. So we will use that page to get that message to you because we no longer have an IVR. We don't have the ability to get that message to you on the IVR. So we are using that help and contact page when you click into a topic that you want to contact us on please do look for a banner there to see if there's anything that might help you um, and we're continuing to work to ensure that we have resource and that we're able to, to get to you as quickly as we possibly can we're scaling our resource across all of the skills that we need and looking to ensure that we have people ready to answer you especially through peak trading so um, apologies if we weren't able to get to you over the last number of weeks and months we well, please know we're, we're, we're doing our best to invest in that space and to ensure that it's easy for you to contact us and that we get you the right answer at the right time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hazel. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, last week, obviously, we had, uh, you know, some payments issues, uh, which, you know, the good news is I don't think we have sort of the same like site wide issues, you know, now that I think of, uh, you know, I don't know, 10, look at the memories on the page, like, you know, 10 years ago, working Fridays and weekends and, you know, site goes down and auctions don't reach full price realization. So, you know, we're in a much better position now than we were in the past, but we also have, you know, 100 million more shoppers on the site and that much more happening when, uh, when uh, issues take place. So, um, you know, Hazel, appreciate everything that you and your team do. And uh, as always, you know, please, uh, for all the sellers on the call, keep that feedback uh, coming. Um, next question up, uh, David had asked um, both in chat and earlier, you know, what are we doing with counterfeits and where are we headed? Uh, so I, you know, number one for me, I don't like half measures and things that just feel good because we put out a press release, but make things messier that we then have to clean up later. Uh, and so with the work we've taken on watches and sneakers, we basically eliminate the problem. We eliminate the problem so buyers don't have to worry about getting a counterfeit. And we also protect all of the sellers because we intermediate the returns. You don't need to worry about getting a rock in the box or bubble wrap in the box and getting an empty product back, which is awesome. 
And our plans are definitely to continue to scale that program out next year um, into products and at price points where it actually makes sense to do it. Having said that, uh, there are questions, I think, you know, David, you were asking about aviation parts. I know nothing about aviation parts. I'm going to guess it probably doesn't make a lot of sense for eBay to intermediate the shipment of aviation parts and determine what's authentic. Uh, over Thanksgiving weekend, one of our uh, employees sent me an impassioned plea to go and clean up counterfeit geodes. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently for really rare geodes domestically, uh, people are importing counterfeit geodes from China. And if you're an enthusiast in the category, it's easy to spot these. And I have heard the same thing um, from uh, one of our community members in the video game category, vintage video games. They can easily spot what is a authentic first gen Nintendo cartridge versus what is a counterfeit. And it's not um, replica, like it's those things have a spot if they're branded correctly, but true counterfeits, uh, that's not good for the ecosystem. We don't want that GMV in the site. It undermines credibility of all the communities on the platform. Um, and that area is definitely something we are making a bigger focus on as a company next year. We've been really excited about seeing the results and the customer feedback and how much our buyer satisfaction has gone up in the categories we've brought our authenticity guarantee. But as you can imagine, it's trickier because we can't staff experts in every category to go and identify this. And um, I get a little bit nervous about sort of just creating a giant community reporting network where we then have to staff, you know, thousands of people to go through and vet the reports and make sure something is actually counterfeit and it's not a vindictive report. So um, I don't have a concrete answer on this is what we will do. And by this date, we will have the problem gone. But what I will say is we've done more on counterfeits in the last six months than we've probably done in the six preceding years. Uh, and we are investing millions more next year on this specific problem. So there's categories like aviation parts or others that are front of mind for you. Um, please send them our way. Uh, you know, Sharon, I see the thumbs up there. It's a huge GR topic. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's in our interest. Regulators, governments want to see us cracking down on this. It's better for brands, better for the ecosystem. Uh, it's just a win all around. So if you see areas of passion that I can't promise you will start there, but will help give us examples of how diverse the problem is, please send them our way and that will help uh, give us the right information on how to get started and how to make progress. Uh, vintage t-shirts, yeah. I, uh, I don't know, as someone who tries to find uh, very specific like 80s rock band t-shirts, uh, I'm like, well, I don't mind paying if it's a replica, but like, it, Andrea, I see you laughing. Andrea doesn't think I have very good fashion style and I won't pretend to defend that at all. Uh, I don't think 80 rock, 80 REO Speedwagon t-shirt with my Muppet uh, 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 kicks uh, is going to get me too far. Uh, but uh, it is a big problem. We need to figure it out. Um, uh, up next, uh, Ashish, I'm going to throw this one your way. Uh, Danny was asking some questions, but a number of other people were asking questions around uh, late shipping. So what happens when, like, when exactly can the buyer open the INR? When can the buyer escalate the INR? Uh, we said we're protecting sellers, but are we really protecting sellers or are we just protecting like losses? Uh, so what, you know, I, I know you're slacking some other people during the meeting, but what have you figured out in the last hour and, and you know, what can you help answer for this group? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a great one to clarify. Look, what, what um, I said earlier, um, a buyer cannot open a claim until um, at least a day past the expected delivery date that we gave them. Uh, they cannot uh, escalate a claim for at least three days after that. Um, and past that for another 10 days, as long as we see any activity on the shipment, we will not close the claim against the seller because we know given this time, packages are taking longer to get delivered. We want to give the package every uh, opportunity to get to the buyer. Um, after that, if the package still hasn't been, been delivered, we will then close the case um, as an assume the package lost. But until that point, we will actually hold and give every opportunity. Now, I saw some comments in the in the chat around, um, but I've seen cases being open earlier. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, Brian Burke is already in touch with you. Uh, please send us any example. If there are places where we're seeing that, we will go investigate that. Um, there are some small edge cases where we do allow that, but that is because uh, the tracking shows the item's been delivered before delivery date, but the buyer says they haven't gotten it. So there are some edge cases where that can happen, but if you're seeing outside that where it doesn't make sense, definitely reach out to Brian Burke. He's put his email in there uh, and we, we can go investigate. And so just to be, make sure everybody's really clear, uh, 
we track obviously you know Stuart Shishin team. We track all the shipping metrics. Uh, right now, we see buyer late is quite high, and that makes sense when you look at what's going on with USPS and other carriers. The seller late rate, so where we actually sort of you know would count that as a defect on performance metrics, is actually lower right now than it was last year at the same time. So um, as we have done a better job of optimizing our system, uh, we have more in place to protect you. But if we see an increase where we are seeing USPS is not doing as many acceptance scans, and so therefore you're now being held accountable for it being late, even though you got it to the carrier on time, um, 100% we will come back and make sure that your seller performance standards uh, are protected. Uh, I think as a company, we are better positioned now to handle issues like this than ever before, but 2020 is also a bit you know, off the charts. And so um, we're a little bit making it up each week in terms of you know, how much do we need to respond and adjust the models? And, you know, Stuart tomorrow could add an X day shipping delay to everything so that nothing was late for buyers. But I also don't want to slow down the velocity in our platform so much that people start shopping elsewhere on a site where things will show up just as late, but they think it's going to come faster. And so it's a fine balance to make sure that we um, uh, we don't set false expectations for buyers. All of you don't get, get inundated with claims, but please keep the feedback coming and know that uh, Stuart and team uh, send you know daily and sometimes more than that uh, updates on how things are moving through the network and across the country. Uh, Stuart, next one's actually for you. Uh, so there are a bunch of questions around uh, eBay standard envelope. Uh, what's really required? Is it a flat rate envelope? Do I have to buy shipping supplies? Can I go into the post office? Is it an eBay label? Like how exactly does this thing work? Because it sounds pretty cool. And for people who are in the card space, they'd love to give it a try. And for people who are in related categories, uh, you know, they just want to learn more and, and you know, curious as to when it's coming their way. Yeah, great. Thanks, Jordan. Um, yeah, as mentioned, we're really excited about um, this launch. Uh, also mentioned initially in the trading card category and then uh, to be announced uh, as we expand beyond that. Um, eBay Standard Envelope, ESE, is available on the eBay Labels platform. Uh, so as it becomes available by category, you'll see it within the printing flow uh, and listing flow. The service applies um, to items up to three ounces uh, and also with uh, dimensional weight caps also. Uh, it's priced by ounce, so one ounce, two ounce, three ounces. Uh, but buyer location is not relevant. So it's the same price uh, across all the U.S. Uh, within those three ounce uh, breaks. Uh, in terms of packaging, yeah, sellers will need to use their own packaging uh, that fits the weight and dim requirements. Uh, that's all uh, in our announcement. You'll see all that. Uh, but we do plan to uh, have eBay mailers that will uh, that are specific for eBay standard envelope. Uh, available on our supplies store in early Q1 uh, 2021. Awesome. Thank you, Stuart. So um, I, I know we're wrapping up. I'll take one last one. Uh, Donna, you were nicely uh, multi-pinging me with direct chats and everything else. I see you waving there. Uh, so um, uh, question around uh, what was up with that uh, authentication center that eBay stood up in LA? We sort of took over a uh, shutdown uh, you know, 1960s, 40s era style gas station, put eBay wrap on it and called it an authentication center and had cars showing up to um, authenticate cards, sneakers, watches. I think we had other, maybe you saw a bear brick go through there. Uh, you know, what? Uh, what's the deal with that? And are we gonna like, you know, build a network of these across the country and create eBay retail footprint? Uh, so no, uh, we're definitely not getting into buying items. Uh, and in fact, we really clear the people there eBay employees set it up, but it was actually eBay sellers local to that area uh, who were the ones doing the authenticating. And for customers who got offers on the spot, it was eBay uh, sellers who were sort of, you know, buying those cards and, you know, thinking about the value that they get if they grade them and then, um, you know, sell them again. Uh, so it's not something we're going to roll out across the country. Having said that, we got really positive response uh, from both the PR perspective. Um, uh, uh, our sellers had a lot of fun and then customers thought it was cool. The first day we had some cars, by the third day, they were actually lined up around the block and starting to block traffic, which was kind of an unexpected response. And so I had a number of people ping me afterwards, which is like, wow, this is kind of like eBay Antiques Roadshow brought to life. Like maybe we should actually like take this thing on the road. Some of you may remember the old eBay Airstream. Like maybe we actually need to have like the eBay 
authentication airstream antiques roadshow hybrid and we kind of you know drive across the country and you know set ourselves up uh you know in different you know large towns small towns main streets and and uh and engage local sellers uh who have different areas of passion and get the message out to buyers in those communities i think it'd be a great way to you know connect our customers and and bring our brand uh locally so um you know don't take what i said here as a as a, as a commitment uh but uh, there were a lot, it was a lot of fun, and I think we were surprised about uh, how well everybody responded to it. It was kind of just a cheeky idea to get some coverage for our recent efforts, and the response was overwhelmingly positive. So um, I'm excited to see what that could look like. And then, uh, Donna, you also asked if I could drop into um, seller school, uh, uh, closing ceremonies, celebration wrap-up next week. I think Liz is going to figure out how to get that on my calendar, so more than happy uh, to, uh, to do that. Uh, so I know we're um, at time. I think, uh, I know, Rebecca, if you wanted to, to wrap up, but uh, just, you know, final words for me. I just wanted to thank everybody. Uh, you know, Michael, you touched on this earlier. Uh, you know, thank you for selling on eBay. Um, everybody on this call uh, has a network of sellers, family, and friends that you reach out to. And, you know, and as I kind of coach different eBay executives who come in and speak, I'm like, you're speaking to 50 to 100 people who actually reach 50 to 100,000 people. It's pretty amazing. And so, Eat what all of you do, both in the community, uh, um, sending feedback to our employees. Uh, many of you are awesome to send me feedback uh, in helpful and sometimes provocative manners. And all of that is actually a part of what makes the eBay community. Uh, and then 2020, which has just been obviously a crazy year. I think every adjective and superlative has you know, been you know, used um, um, to excess at this point. But uh, I've been really humbled and amazed to see how our platform which is really the technology our employees and everybody that all of you represent have responded to the changing retail trends that Shusharita talked about staying at home gardening plants spices bread making uh pools spas hot tubs games puzzles use new um uh it's been incredible to sort of watch this uh this journey and uh I'm personally very excited for what we'll be able to do uh, together next year. So I just wanted to thank all of you for that. And then uh, Rebecca, I'll hand it uh, over to you. Great. Thank you. So just to echo what Jordan said, sellers, yes, thank you so much for everything that you've done this year, all of your hard work. Thanks for showing up here today um, and spending some time with us. There's some questions in the chat that we didn't get to. Um, we will capture those and go through them and make sure that we respond to you. And then also there's going to be a survey when we end the meeting. So please be sure to take that. We'd love to hear what worked, maybe what didn't. Let us know how we can keep these meetings really helpful and interesting for you guys. Um, and finally, I just want to say again, you know, happy holidays. I hope the rest of your holiday season is busy and lively and as fun as possible, you know, given 2020. Um, and if I don't see any of you, I will see you all next year. It's funny every year. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your time today. Bye.